We're here at the Performance Racing Industries Trade Show in Indianapolis, Indiana, showing you some of the features of the Intercomp Variable Speed 3 horsepower dyno. This dyno comes with two different offerings as far as speeds. It is offered in a high speed unit and a standard speed unit. It comes standard with a 2,000 pound compression tension load cell and also comes standard with a laptop. All right, right now we're just taking a quick glimpse at the, the software that's offered on the, the Intercomp Dyno. I'm gonna just walk you through here firing it up we're in a, in, a, in a live data screen right now and what that is basically is where we can just start running the shock and take a look at what is happening in a live screen we don't record any of this data this isn't going to be logged um, or saved in any spot but it gives you gives you a quick glimpse of, of what's happening with the shock I'm going to run a 10 inch CVP and Basically what you do is I'll just click here. We got a couple options. I can either I can either punch in what I'm looking for as far as the speed or I can run the slide bar. I feel it to be easier just to, to punch it in. So I'm gonna punch that in at 10 and you're gonna see that the machine is running. Now down here I have just some peak numbers. This is gonna be the, the peak number that on compression and the peak number on rebound that the shock is exerting at 10 inches a second. Up here we've got our, our bars that are a quick glimpse of the position that the machine's in, the velocity or speed, and the, the force. And we also do have our, our temperature gauge which is hooked up to our shock. Now I can switch at the top, I can switch graphs. I can go to uh, graphing a CVP and I will start that and that'll give me a quick glimpse of what my CVP is going to look like. Once again, this is nothing that will be saved, but when we are uh, troubleshooting shocks and we are building shocks, it's a nice, nice option to have to see if, if you're in the general vicinity and when you are tuning on different adjustable shocks and whatnot. All right, now I've clicked onto my peak graph, and I'll start that, and that is going to give me just a peak number and a line between zero and that 10 inch number lining it out a little simpler graph to look at not quite as much data to to gather from it but but nonetheless a, a useful a useful graph so if i want to shut the machine off i will just go back here and erase that number and that'll bring me back to zero velocity now i'm going to quick show you how to load a new test into the machine. The software is extremely easy to use, very simple. Today we're going to use the test name DLMRR, so basically just labeling it as a dirt late model right rear on, on the car. Uh, in the comment section we can put any information we would like about it uh, for future reference as you will be able, you'll be saving all the information that you gather from the shock. Now in the CVP mode I'll punch in 10 and it'll bring me back to uh, a similar screen to what I had in my live mode. What I'm going to do is zero the load cell and I will start the test. It's going to start a warm-up cycle. You're able to load in whatever warm-up cycle you would like in your settings. You can, you can extend the, the warm-up cycle, you can have no warm-up cycle, or you can have it uh, cycle until it is to a certain temperature. All right, as you can see here, we've gathered our data from our from our shock that we dynoed. We did a 10 inch CVP, which means we ran the the shock out to 10 inches a second, and we've gathered data all the way from uh, from zero inches all the way to 10. And what we have looked at here is a force versus absolute velocity curve. Now this is going to be a very very common curve used in uh, in the industry. There are some different uh, curves we can use. If we want to just split that in half, we can use a compression close rebound open. The other offering would be to use a compression open rebound closed and also your traditional force versus displacement graph. All off of the information and all off of the data that we gathered off the one, off of the one run. So everything is stored in that capacity. Now we are going to set up a 
PVP test or a peak velocity pickoff test. And we're just going to put DLM RR2 for our test name. And once again, we can put the comments in here as far as anything we want to store about the shock, any information we'd like to have on it. And I'm going to click on this peak velocity pickoff test. Now, I'll punch in 10 inches a second. Press continue. Now it's going to ask me for some different velocity increments. When I'm running a peak velocity pickoff, I can pick certain velocity increments. And really with a test like this, I'm trying to get maximum, a maximum amount of information in, in a single run at a number of different speeds. Now that we've run our peak velocity pickoff, I'll show you some of the information we can gather. When we looked at our CVPs before, now with this run, we have gathered 10 different CVPs. So I can take this data, and if I want to have my 10 inch CVPs similar to what I've run before, I can take that and I can bring up that number. Now if I'm looking at from some different information and I would like to find a different speed or look, looking at a different speed that the shock has been run at off of the same dyno run, I can take that information and lay that over top of each other. That'd be one of the advantages of, first of all, having a variable speed unit and second of all, being able to run a, a peak velocity pickoff with, with the opportunity to have a, a CVP laid over.